Oh, God. I think you need some of this. Uh, or anyone else? Oh, yes. A little more of that. Okay. Well. Oh, there it is, a guide. And I am a fossil fuel addict. And here is my story. I'm actually backsliding. I actually tried to pretend way back in March 2009 that I had broken my addiction to fossil fuels, but it's only just been a big lie to myself. That was uh, back in March of 2009 is when I sold my gas sucking truck down in Costa Rica, which of course meant I had to get on an airplane to fly to Peru and then get on a bus to get to Terrapoto and then get in a taxi 
to get to the village I was going. But anyway, for six and a half years, I tried to pretend that I was not a fossil fuel addict. Which of course meant that I just drove all of my fossil fuel addict friends gas-sucking cars and if I really had to get somewhere far away that one of my fossil fuel addict friends wasn't going I would just hop on an airplane so I have in fact spent a hell of a lot more time in airplanes in the last few years than I have in any part of my life because I didn't have a gas sucking truck to get where I wanted to go so I just got in an airplane but still through all throughout it all I was a uh, a, 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 a strident anti-fossil fuel uh, proselytizer actually started a YouTube channel one of the main one of the main uh, tenets of which was convincing people to get rid of their gas sucking cars but then what happened back in August I, I, I fell off the wagon. I fell off the wagon and I took an airplane from here in California, took an airplane to Austin, Texas so I could buy a gas sucking truck to turn around and drive right back to where I just started from in the airplane and that was the middle of August it's now October 28 2015 and I have uh, actually had a for sale sign on my gas sucking truck for several weeks my ad on Craigslist and uh, so it finally happened that I got a good solid pretty much full price as is offer on my gas sucking truck last night that I've been selling for the past three weeks or so and so I was supposed to meet the people at their mechanics this morning to get the truck smogged and all of that but what happened was about uh, good God, probably midnight last night I was in here, you know, firing up this blue dream. You might want to, you, you might want to fire up some of this blue dream yourself, Minnie. And anyway, I got this real jonesing for a McDonald's hot fudge sundae. And the McDonald's, good God, is like seven miles from here, but... I don't know. Uh, once uh, you know you're on this blue dream, and you need a McDonald's hot fudge sundae at 11:30 at night, and there's one way to get to the hot McDonald's hot fudge sundae. And that's your gas truck and suck. Your gas sucking truck. You're 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 gonna fall. So I have to admit that I that at 11:30 last night I climbed in my gas truck and suck, and drove seven miles so I could get a hot fudge sundae at the all-night McDonald's in Scotts Valley, California. And uh, I have to admit, it was a damn good McDonald's hot fudge sundae. I went back to McDonald's today, as a matter of fact, to get one of those. Now they're $1.39 McChickens. But if I did not have my gas 
second truck, I would not have had either the McDonald's hot fudge Sunday or the McChicken because I would have had no way to get there because there is no bus. So anyway, uh, what happened this morning, I called the, uh, these buyers who were all excited about buying my truck thinking that we were at 9 o'clock this morning we're going to go down and, uh, and get my truck smogged and they were going to give me $6,500, which is $3,000 more than I paid for the truck uh, in Texas. Uh, I announced to them that I was not selling my gas sucking truck and was in fact going to keep the truck and drive it back to Austin, Texas at the end of next week. And then of course what I had to do is go back with my gas sucking truck, go back to the lumber yard and get some more redwood lumber. I'm doing this deck job where I'm, or I'm replacing this redwood deck. So, you know, I, I need this truck to be a planet eater. And it has occurred to me today that I am a fossil fuel addict. So, here I am a new member to Fossil Fuel Addicts Anonymous and that is my sad story. Why, thank you Hambone for that heartwarming story about you being a backsliding, hypocritical, lying sack of shit eco-hypocrite planet eater that you are. Is there anybody, any other, any other eco-hypocrite lying sack of shit planet eaters in this room full of 7.2 billion people who would like to come forward and share their stories? Not one of you not one of you 7.2 billion fossil fuel addicts will. I guess this will be a short meeting. Well, Hambone, it looks like everybody except you is shy. And no one wants to admit what lying sack of shit, eco-hypocrite, planet eaters they are. So, would you mind reading from the FFAA handbook to share with the other 7.2 billion lying sack of shit eco-hypocrites? Maybe send this. There it is. I see Obama First names only. I see Obama out there. I see Al. I see Derek. I see Guy. But I guess none of them want to come forward and share their stories. Okay. Hambone, I'm going to ask you to read from the FFAA handbook. Okay, you little rodent. Now, if you insist, let me take another shot of uh, tequila for it. So this is how it works. Uh, how fossil fuel addicts anonymous works. This is from their. Uh, from their handbook. Rarely have we seen a person fail who has thoroughly followed our path. Those who do not recover 
from their fossil fuel addiction are people who cannot or will not completely give themselves to this simple program. Usually men and women and rodents who are constitutionally incapable of being honest with themselves about how they are destroying a planet and killing their own children and grandchildren. There are such unfortunates. They are not at fault. They seem to have been born that way. They are naturally incapable, incapable of grasping and developing a manner of living which demands rigorous honesty with themselves, is what they're talking about here. Their chances are less than average. There are those two who suffer from grave emotional and mental disorders, but many of them do recover from their fossil fuel addiction if they have the capacity to be honest. So our stories, like the like Brother Hambones you just heard here, disclose in a general way what we used to be like back before we became, you know, back before about 150 years ago, what we used to be like what happened, mainly the discovery of fossil fuels, and what we are like now. So if you have decided you want what we have and are willing to go to any length to get it, then you are ready to take certain steps. Yes, at some of these 12 steps, we bought we thought we could find an easier, softer way, but we could not. With all the earnestness at our command, we beg of you to be fearless and thorough from the very start. Some of us have tried to hold on to our old ideas about fossil fuel addiction, and the result was nil until we let go absolutely. Remember that we deal with fossil fuels. Cunning, baffling, powerful fossil fuels. Without help, it is too much for us, but there is one who has all power. That one is Mother Nature. May you find her now. Half measures availed us nothing. We stood at the turning point we asked her protection and care with complete abandon. Here are the 12 steps we took, which are suggested as a program of recovery for fossil fuel addiction. Okay, step number one. We admitted we were powerless over fossil fuels, that our lives had become unmanageable. Two, we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Three, we made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of Mother Earth as we understood her. Number four, we made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. And step number five, 
we admitted to Mother Nature, to ourselves, and to one of our fellow Earthlings, the exact nature of our wrongs. Step number six, we were entirely ready to have Mother Nature remove all these defects of character. Step number seven, we humbly asked Mother Nature to remove our shortcomings. Step number eight, we made a list of all of our fellow earthlings we had harmed with our fossil fuel addiction and became willing to, make, to make amends to them all. Step number nine, we made direct amends to such of our fellow earthlings wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Step number 10, we continued to take personal inventory and when we were wrong, we promptly admitted it. You know, I thought I was wrong once, but I was mistaken. Step number 11, we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with Mother Earth as we understood her, praying only for knowledge of her will for us and the power to carry that out. And step number 12, having had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to fossil fuel addicts and to practice these principles in all our affairs. Many of us exclaimed, what an order! I can't go through with it! Do not be discouraged. No one among us has been able to maintain anything like perfect adherence to these fossil fuel principles. We are not saints. The point is that we are willing to grow along spiritual lines. These principles we have set down are guides to progress. We claim spiritual progress rather than spiritual perfection. Our description of the fossil fuel addict, the chapter to the agnostic, and our personal adventures before and after make clear three pertinent ideas. A, that we were fossil fuel addicts and could not manage our own addiction. B, that probably no human power could have relieved our fossil fuel addiction. And C, that Mother Nature could and would if she were sought. Yes. And uh, then we also have the 12 traditions of fossil fuel ad addicts, anonymous, uh, but I'm, I guess uh, just a few of these. The only requirement for FFAA membership is a desire to stop using fossil fuels. Each group has but one primary purpose, to carry the message to 
the fossil fuel addict who still suffers. Okay, a lot of this is, uh, oh yes, the FFAA name ought never be drawn into public controversy. Yes, and then instead of 12 FFA promises, only 11. But these are the FFAA promises. I'm not necessarily going to do all 11. Number one, we are going to know a new freedom and a new happiness. Two, we will not regret the past nor wish to shut the door on it. We will comprehend the word serenity and we will know peace. No matter how far down the scale we have gone, we will see our experience can benefit others. That feeling of uselessness and self-pity will disappear. We will lose interest in selfish things such as going to McDonald's at midnight for a hot food Sunday and gain interest in our fellow earthlings. Our whole attitude and outlook upon life will change. Fear of people and economic insecurity will leave us. We will suddenly realize that Mother Nature is doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. Are these extravagant promises? We think not. They are being fulfilled among us, sometime quickly, sometime slowly they will materialize if we work for them. Wife, thank you very much, Hambone. Okay, are there any FFAA-related announcements? Surely somebody in a room full of 7.2 million people has an FFAA announcement. Hambone. I mean, Hambone. What is your announcement to the fossil fuel addicts? Well, I just wanted to let you know right here in this week's Good Times, we have a coupon for a a drive-through oil change for $24.95. You get an oil change up to five quarts of conventional oil, an oil filter, you get your chassis lubed, and check all fluid levels, belts and hoses. Thank you, Hambone, for that important timely announcement. I know I'm going to get one of those coupons on my way home tonight. So now we will close the meeting with our serenity prayer. God grant Mother Nature, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change.